Hi, Aunts. Julia here, recording this on September 11th, 2022. Hard to believe we made it this far, huh? Just want to talk a little bit about um, self-awareness and how awesome that is when that state is achieved because so many people are just oblivious to everything, including their own part in uh, creating their reality. So having that self-awareness is so, so big and taking responsibility for your life because you did have a part to play in everything. Maybe early on, you didn't have much of a part, but since adulthood, most of us have had a large influence on how our life has played out. And we have to uh, have that self-awareness and see our part in it, take our responsibility, and if need be, make changes. So, um, yeah, but I think it's just such a big step when people finally get to that step and they start uh, noticing things about themselves. And they're like, well, yeah, this happens when this happens. Man, that's so big. It's such a big part of healing to just put two and two together and just dissect what's going on within you that's causing everything that's happening outside of you. And again, once you start doing honest self-reflection, introspection, you'll find that you probably need to do some healing and uh, that's where language lessons of the heart and other healing modalities can come in. And you can find emotional healing playlist on this channel if you haven't heard about those yet. And yeah, self-awareness and taking responsibility. Because even in situations where, <clears throat> where we were victims, for the most part, we usually had some part to play in that and I know that's been the case with me I felt so much of a victim when I got divorced because you know it was an extramarital affair and all that kind of stuff but in truth I did have a part to play with all that and I was able to look back and and see that and just see it from a whole different light not so much as a victim but as a participant in causing it to happen. And so many things happened in that situation. That was one of those situations where I was concerned and worried that it would happen from day one. This was an 18-year-long relationship. And I always said and thought and knew that at some point when my ex hit his midlife crisis, so to speak, that he would leave me for a younger woman, and I was already six years younger than him. And it was true. It all happened exactly like I imagined and worried about. And that's just one example of how worrying is a manifestation technique that you don't want to use. So, yeah, I've got to put that worrying on the shelf because... It really does work, and that's just one example. There's many, many, many. And I know that most of you have those examples, too. So like I'm always saying, focus on what you want, not what you don't want. And it's just amazing how that plays out. It's such a magical realm that we live in. And the more tapped in you get, the quicker manifestations happen, good or bad. So you really have to be mindful of your thoughts. And you can see why we're in training right now with our manifestation abilities, with our creator abilities. Because if everything we thought happened at this point in our awakening, evolution, whatever you want to call it, then um, we wouldn't do too well if everything we thought just manifested instantly. 
because we haven't gotten to that pure state of mind yet. And it's also just how you think of other people, too. Um, even if, you know, they're not the best people, you have to always try to look at them from that perspective of they're part of you, they're part of creation, too. They're doing the best they can from the level of consciousness that they're at. And try not to judge. You know, when we're being self-aware, it's not to judge ourselves, it's to find the judgments that we have about ourselves, release those and replace those with, you know, emotional healing modality like language lessons of the heart. So, but when we're looking at other people, we can kind of do the same thing. We can kind of see how they're acting and figure out what judgment they're having that's causing them to act that way. But it's, that part's not necessary. We don't have to go that far in analyzing other people's behavior. We just have to understand it from the perspective of being an unhealed person and hope for the best for them, send them positive energy or neutral energy, however you like to do it, and move on and try not to judge or get into conflicts with these people who are, you know, more oblivious, less self-aware. But yeah, I just wanted to give everybody kudos for be for getting to that state of being self-aware. And uh, just looking at yourself and how you have an effect on your reality. And not just an effect, you create your reality. You create it. And... Uh, like I've said many times, if you're not mindful of that, you're just going to create the default reality of the collective. Or worse, you're going to manifest all the things that you worry about. So it really, really is important to uh, stay focused on what you want. When you find yourself worrying, replace it with something else. You know, if you're doing the language lessons of the heart processes then uh, start doing your empowerments or you know when you when you think of something that you're worrying about put in an affirmation of something good instead but yeah stop the worrying for sure yeah so i just want to talk about the self-awareness and how huge of a step that is and to give everybody out there that's made that stride to become self-aware kudos for doing that because uh, that's the first step in healing no doubt about it all right everybody we came down a different trail today there's where I live right down there and that little van I don't know if you can see it that's an Eric that's visiting here but uh, yeah thanks for listening and uh, always focus on what you want and have a great morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are. And I'll talk to you next time. Ciao, ciao.